Sadly, thousands of people are reported missing every single day. While the majority of missing person cases get resolved, there's still a large number of people that are never seen again. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three mountain disappearances. The Mysterious Disappearance of Esther Dingley Esther Dingley was hiking alone through the Pyrenees Mountains this past November when she abruptly disappeared. Dingley, a 37-year-old from Durham, England, was trekking solo through the mountains from Spain to France and set to come home on November 25, 2020. The last communication she had with family was three days prior when she messaged her boyfriend via WhatsApp and sent him a selfie on top of a mountain. Dingley and her partner, Dan Colgate, are avid travellers and have spent the last six years adventuring around Europe. Just before her solo trek, their story of living the van life since 2014 was published by BBC News. Dingley had taken their camper van for her whole trip while Colgate stayed at a farm in the southwest of France. It has been over two weeks since she first went missing. Police opened up a missing persons case and have been circulating posters of Dingley around the area. Various mountain rescue units have conducted widespread searches but have been unsuccessful in locating her. They were forced to halt their searches due to poor weather conditions. Locals and authorities believe it likely that she fell into freezing waters and drowned or severely injured herself. They claim that accidents like that happen all year round, but especially in winter. They fear this is the reason why there is no trace of Dingley. The increased water depth and piling snow is hiding the body. There have been previous instances where bodies disappeared in the mountains during winter and then were found the following spring when the snow melted. Dingley was last seen by Spanish Olympic skier Marty Vigo del Arco and his girlfriend. On November 22nd, around 3pm, they were trekking down from Pic de Sauvegarde, an 11-point-mile loop trail near the France-Spain border, when they came across a British woman. She was still ascending and asked for some fruit. This trail is recommended only for very experienced hikers and is best used from May to October. About an hour after the couple saw her, Dingley sent the mountaintop selfie to her boyfriend. It's worrisome that she was still climbing up that late in the afternoon. It means she was on a difficult trail while in the dark. Her family are concerned of the possibility that her disappearance was not a hiking accident but an abduction. On November 19th, Dingley received a ride from an unknown hiker which she wrote about on her blog. Police are investigating all leads and possibilities and are searching for this hiker to question him. While they will continue to explore all avenues, the lead French investigator, Captain Jean-Marc Bondanaro, rejected the possibility of kidnapping, claiming that it was near impossible to be abducted while on the mountain. The case has been turned over to a specialised judicial unit in France to continue to investigate those odds. As winter approaches and the weather turns colder, authorities fear that their searches will stop. If heavy snow continues to fall, it could take months until it's safe enough for rescue teams to traverse the mountains and resume their search. Teresa Gibson disappears from the Great Smoky Mountains On October 8, 1976, Teresa Lynn Gibson, also known as Trenny, went on a field trip to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. She travelled with 35 to 40 of her classmates from Bearden High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. Despite being surrounded with a group and other hikers, 16-year-old Trenny mysteriously disappeared from the park. The field trip was odd to begin with. There were almost 40 students, yet only one teacher to supervise them, plus the bus driver. According to some students, they were not even informed of their field trip destination until they arrived at the park. Only then did they find out that they would be hiking about 1.8 miles from Klingman's Dome to Andrews Bald, and then returning to the Forney Ridge Trail. When students began their hike, they split up into smaller groups based on their walking speed. Throughout the day, Trenny walked at different paces with various groups of classmates. However, at some point in the afternoon, she mysteriously vanished. She was last seen by classmates near Klingman's Dome at 3pm. They were hiking along a fairly steep trail with thick vegetation and sudden drop-offs. Apparently, she glimpsed something on the right side of the trail and left the path. 
that was the last time anyone saw her. Rescue teams began searching for her in the late afternoon. The weather and fall foliage made it difficult for search and rescue to use helicopters and inspect the trail. Instead, they used tracking dogs to pick up her scent. There were around six teams of bloodhounds and German shepherds that searched and picked up her scent near the juncture of the Klingman's Dome Trail and the Appalachian Trail. They followed her scent past Klingman's Dome Tower up until a mile and a half from Newfound Gap. The scent then disappeared along the roadside. Multiple theories have arisen and suspects investigated. Some believe Trenny was in Klingman's Dome Observation Tower while the initial search was being conducted because it was never inspected. Once the searchers left, she travelled to the roadside where she got into a car, either voluntarily or against her will. There are some reports of cigarettes and beer cans found along the roadside. Trenny's classmate, Robert Simpson, was implicated as a suspect since her hairbrush was discovered in his car, but police quickly dismissed the idea. Trenny's parents, Robert and Hope Gibson, informed the police of a previous break-in by a young man whom Mrs. Gibson shot at. After being shot, he threatened to hurt their daughter. Although the authorities investigated this man, there were no leads for them to follow. Searches were conducted extensively through October and then again from April 18th to May 5th, 1977, but to no avail. Searches resumed in 1981 as well, but they never found anything. Kim Pouncey, a friend of Trini's, gave an interview in November 2017 for an episode of Appalachian Unsolved where she expressed her doubt of an abduction. She believes Trenny left of her own accord and had someone waiting for her in the park, that she had planned it because she wanted to leave and get away. After so many searches, the rangers of the National Park were convinced that she was not in the park. Her body was never found. There are no current suspects, leads or evidence. It's strange that a young girl could vanish while on a popular trail in the middle of the day surrounded by people. Whether she orchestrated her own disappearance or was kidnapped, Will remain a mystery. The Strange Disappearance of Alfred Bielharts It was a warm summer day in 1938 when the Bielharts family decided to go fishing at Estes Park, Colorado. They had been camping in the Rocky Mountain National Park over Independence Day weekend for their summer vacation. What they expected to be a lovely and fun family outing soon turned into a nightmare that they never woke up from. On July 3rd, 1938, at approximately 8am, the youngest Bilhart's child, Alfred, mysteriously disappeared. The family was camping about a quarter mile west of the Fall River Lodge with family friends. The campsite was situated near Horseshoe Falls, where the Roaring River and Fall River intersect. That morning, the Bilhart's family made plans to go fishing. They were hiking together on a trail that ran alongside the Roaring River. As the trail they were hiking on was narrow, the family formed a single line as they walked. Little Alfred Bilharts was the youngest of ten children in the family. Only four years old at the time, Alfred made up the rear of the line. His parents and nine older siblings were all ahead of him, so no one noticed when he fell behind the group and vanished. After realizing he disappeared, his family desperately searched the area for him. Unsuccessful, they anxiously called in the park rangers for assistance. Ranger Moomore at the Fall River Ranger Station immediately contacted the Civilian Conservation Corps, a work relief program implemented by President Roosevelt's New Deal. Over a hundred CCC members showed up to help in the search and rescue. The rangers assumed he had fallen and drowned in the creek, so they focused their search there. They dammed the creek by setting up sandbags, rocks, logs and even a fence with barbed wire, but nobody turned up. They also dragged the river for almost six miles, as there was no way for his body to have been carried downstream past all the searches and obstructions, the rangers stopped searching the river. There was a potential sighting of him by fellow hikers in the National Park. On Sunday, July 3rd, William J. Eels and his wife were hiking up the old Fall River Road. While taking a break, they looked up at Mount Chaplin and saw a young boy sitting on a ledge along the mountainside. According to the couple, he made a loud noise before either abruptly leaving or being pulled back. This section of the mountain was six miles west and almost 3,000 feet higher in elevation from where Alfred had vanished from. 
The couple reported this to the rangers a day later, but nothing was found by the time investigators arrived. Alfred's parents were convinced that he had been abducted. They argued that he would never just walk off and leave his family, and they were very doubtful that he had fallen into the creek. The searchers moved their focus onto land and brought in bloodhounds, but to no avail. They picked up a few scents but quickly lost them at a fork in the path and at the water. After ten days, the search was eventually called off. There were hoax ransoms and a claimed sighting of him with a man in Nebraska, but no concrete leads. 82 years later, Alfred Bielhartz is still missing. His case is no longer being investigated. But what do you make of these three mountain disappearances? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.